Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video we will be looking at Harlow's 1958 Animal Study, which you need to know for AQA level psychology in the subtopic of attachment. I hope you enjoy this video and find it helpful. Let's get started. Harlow 1958 conducted an animal study to investigate whether contact comfort plays a crucial role in attachment formation. Harlow conducted a controlled environment study. Eight baby rhesus monkeys were separated from their mothers as soon as they were born and raised in isolation cages where they were introduced to two model surrogate mothers. One was a wire mother while the other was a cloth-covered mother. There were four conditions. A wire mother who produced milk and a cloth mother who did not produce milk. A wire mother who did not produce milk and a cloth mother who did produce milk. Only a wire mother who produced milk. Only a cloth mother who produced milk. A fear condition was introduced to frighten the monkeys where a mechanical bear would make a loud noise. Measurements were made and recorded throughout the observation on the amount of time the monkeys spent with each mother. The baby monkeys spend more time with the cloth mother than the wire mother regardless of whether they had food. The baby monkeys cuddled the cloth-covered mother in preference to the wire food mother. The baby monkeys sought comfort from the cloth mother when frightened in the fear condition. The baby monkeys kept their foot on the cloth mother when playing with new toys. The baby monkeys that were only with the wire mother exhibited physiological signs of stress such as diarrhea. Harlow concluded that contact comfort was of more importance to the monkeys than food when it came to attachment behavior. And that there was a critical period for attachment formation, a mother figure had to be introduced to a young monkey within 90 days for an attachment to form. After this time attachment was impossible and the damage done by early deprivation became irreversible. Harlow conducted a follow-up study and found that the monkeys who had been deprived of a real mother were followed into adulthood to see if this early maternal deprivation had a permanent effect. The researchers found that the monkeys reared with only a wire mother were the most dysfunctional. However, even those reared with a cloth-covered mother did not develop normal social behavior. These deprived monkeys were more aggressive and less sociable than other monkeys and they bred less often than typical monkeys, being unskilled at mating and freezing or fleeing when approached by other monkeys. When they become mothers, some of the deprived mothers neglected their young and others attacked their children, even killing them in some cases. Harlow's animal study has several strengths and limitations. A strength of Harlow's research is that it has useful real-world applications. How, 1998, found that it has helped social workers and clinical psychologists understand that a lack of bonding experience may be a risk factor in child development allowing them to intervene to prevent poor outcomes. It had also helped psychologists to understand the importance of attachment figures for baby monkeys in zoos and breeding programs in the wild. This is a strength because it suggests that Harlow's research has practical implications that can positively impact child development and the well-being of animals in various settings, providing valuable insights for professionals working in these fields. A strength of Harlow's research is that there is research to support his findings. Schaefer and Emerson's 1964 study into the stages of attachment in humans found that infants were not necessarily attached to those who fed them but instead to those who were more sensitive to their needs. This has some links to the cloth mother as this appeared to provide contact comfort and thus sensitivity to the monkey's needs during times of distress. This is a strength because it implies that Harlow's research findings are reinforced by empirical evidence, showcasing the significance of emotional connections and sensitivity in attachment relationships, both in humans and monkeys. The concept of contact comfort, as seen in the cloth mother experiment, underscores the importance of providing emotional support and meeting the needs beyond just physical care, resonating across species in attachment dynamics. A strength of Harlow's research is that it has high internal validity. Harlow conducted a laboratory study with control over variables. This meant that a cause-and-effect relationship could be established with Harlow being more certain that his findings and conclusions are the result of his manipulation of the independent variable affecting the dependent variable and not any extraneous or confounding variables. 
isolating the infant monkeys in a cage with the choice of a surrogate cloth or wire mother, and manipulating which surrogate mother gave milk, but with only the cloth mother being able to give contact comfort. This allowed Harlow to see if the monkeys formed attachments to the carer that fed or comforted them and with the monkeys spending more time with the cloth mother, and only going to the wire mother to feed, this gave measurable evidence that food is not the key factor in animals forming attachments. This is a strength because it suggests that Harlow's research methodology allowed for a more precise examination of the factors influencing attachment, highlighting the significance of comfort over basic needs like food in forming emotional connections between the monkeys and their surrogate mothers. A limitation of Harlow's research is that it is unethical. The study has been criticized for being unnecessarily cruel. The monkeys suffered from extreme, severe and long-term distress. Later in life when the deprived monkeys became mothers and parents, they neglected their young, with some being so neurotic that they smashed their infants' faces into the floor and rubbed it back and forth, attacking and killing them. This meant there was both psychological and physical damage caused to both the monkeys in the study and their offspring. The monkeys also suffered from emotional harm from being reared in isolation shown when the monkeys were placed with a normal monkey, reared by a mother, they sat huddled in a corner in a state of persistent fear and depression. The monkeys were also intentionally subjected to emotional harm through fear tactics to observe their behavior, this created high anxiety in a lot of the monkeys, causing them to be in a constant state of panic and fear, with some ending up harming themselves or others. On top of this, this inhumane treatment led to many of the monkeys dying in the experiment. Harlow's study was deemed so morally unethical that the American animal liberation movement was born, which answered the question to how far animal research can go in the name of science. This is a limitation because it suggests that Harlow's research raised serious ethical concerns due to the severe distress and harm inflicted on the monkeys, leading to long-term negative effects on their well-being and behavior, as well as on their offspring. The unethical treatment of the monkeys in the study, including emotional harm and physical violence, highlights the ethical dilemmas and consequences of conducting such research on animals. However, some psychologists might argue that the cost-benefit analysis outweighs the psychological and physical harm caused to the monkeys. The experiment is sometimes justified as providing valuable insight into the development of attachment and social behavior. At the time of the research, there was a dominant belief that attachment was related to physical care e.g. food, rather than emotional care e.g. love and comfort. This research influenced the theoretical work of John Bowlby, who then proposed the monotropic theory. The research could also be seen as vital in convincing people about the importance of emotional care in hospitals, children's homes, and daycare, with the research showing the devastating consequences and effects that neglect and the absence of attachment formation can have on monkeys, which could never have been conducted on humans as it would have broken ethical guidelines. A limitation of Harlow's research is that the findings and conclusions drawn cannot be generalized from monkeys to humans. The human brain and behavior is far more complex than that of monkeys with humans being governed by greater awareness of thought processes in decision-making. Monkeys, unlike humans, rely more on instinctual behaviors and less on complex cultural and societal norms to guide their actions. While both humans and monkeys exhibit social behaviors, Humans have developed intricate communication systems, cultural practices, and technologies that significantly differentiate our behavior from that of monkeys. Additionally, humans have a higher level of cognitive abilities, abstract thinking, and self-awareness compared to monkeys, which influence our behavior in more diverse and complex ways. This is a limitation because it suggests that the complexity of human behavior, with its greater awareness of thought processes and reliance on cultural and societal norms, differs significantly from the more instinctual behaviors of monkeys. Humans' advanced cognitive abilities, abstract thinking, and self-awareness lead to a broader range of behaviors influenced by intricate communication systems and cultural practices not directly comparable to monkeys. However, it could be argued that with monkeys sharing 94% of DNA with humans, attachment behavior in humans was researched through a setup which would be incomprehensible to humans. The rhesus monkeys were more similar to humans than Lorenz's birds, with all mammals sharing some common attachment behaviors. Behaviorists would also argue that that animal behavior can be generalized to human behavior. 
This is a strength because it suggests that the genetic similarity between humans and monkeys, along with common attachment behaviors shared by mammals, supports the argument that animal behavior can provide valuable insights into human behavior. Behaviorists often advocate for the generalizability of animal behavior to human behavior, highlighting the shared aspects of attachment behaviors across species. Thank you for watching. If you have enjoyed this video please like and subscribe for more content like this. Bye.